Hello everyone, Genesis Rider here with another Genesis Tips and Tricks video. Today I'll be going over my third SWAT gameplay on the map, Drift. Now during this game, there's some interesting circumstances that did occur that I need to point out. Um, one of the enemy players after the game occurred, Ripley's Revenge on the enemy blue team, sent me a message, and this is what she said. So, yeah, good game. Holy shit, 37 kills. Um, honestly, I'm curious. Um, do you have your sensitivity turned up or what? Because I'm always looking to improve. But, yeah, good game. I mean, I'm giving you props. I'm just curious how you got those shots off so fast. So you can see that um, this player is kind of bewildered at how I got uh, the number of kills I did inside the game. I'm going to leave that and the multi-kills I got inside the game and the sprees I got as a surprise for you. Specifically, I want to go over how I got these multi-kills, not really call-outs and not really um, necessarily a whole lot of map positioning, but how I was able to kill that sheer number of players in the amount of time you have in a SWAT game. I will have to admit um, a few things, one is which I did not mean to start this game with a DMR, although I did, unfortunately, because I wasn't actually at my console necessarily when the game was choosing its loadouts. The second thing I want to mention is that this gameplay is very rare for me. It is rare that I ever get a gameplay like this on a drift, and I feel that it's a great example for other players who are trying to be super aggressive with their drift gameplay, and they want to know how to be super aggressive. So let's go over this gameplay and analyze it and see what we can discover. So this is the opening route that I recommend for pretty much all players. It's what I would recommend running um, your best players through this area because that's pretty much where everyone tends to go. Um, now you can see I spawn in this lower hallway and I'm going to push over here. Now I see my teammate lift over just to my left. So instead of trying to hang around in this base or move or, you know, go through the attic or anything, I'm going to try to cut off this angle really quickly. Okay, I'm going to sprint this doorway ahead of him so that he can't be ahead of me. As soon as I come around the corner, I jump and headshot. Now, I want to mention something that um, the enemy player, Ripley's Revenge, uh, was a little bit confused about. She was using the DMR throughout all of this game. And this there's many examples I'm going to point out, but when you're using the battle rifle, the three-shot burst, if you hit even one of those bullets as a headshot, you can kind of whip the reticle, like you just saw me there, sort of whip it a little bit over his head. And if at least one of those bullets hits his head, you'll get the headshot. That's why it's so much easier on maps like this. And hopefully where I zoom and where I'm looking with my reticle will really help you guys out. Now again, I'm just rotating around. I'm trying to get ahead of my teammate. I'm trying to stay ahead of my teammates here. If my teammates are ahead of me, don't bother pushing in that direction. Or if your teammates are ahead of you, should I say right here just grab the doubles that guy's obviously going to be looking um, over the lift now get the triple kill here and i'm looking and this is really important to understand when you see a guy come over the lift what you don't want to do is just sit back here and wait like oh are there going to be more are there going to be more like it's okay to wait around corners for people to come around them but if you've seen a guy lift over look down that hallway look down that area challenge the reason why i'm saying that is because if you just killed him here there's going to be a big red X on this guy's HUD, all right? You see that little that red X over there? And he's going to be looking in that direction. And these guys are going to be going in that direction because that's where the battle and that's where the action is taking place. Essentially, I'm baiting and using the red Xs so that they'll come to me. So I catch this guy for the overkill and take down Ripley's Revenge. Now, once again, I want you to notice how I'm jumping and whipping my reticle, okay? This is very important to jump around corners like this. It's much harder to hit someone who's jumping in the air uh, around a corner than it is just to come around. Most players, and most players who are good, are going to be aiming on the exact level of your head. Okay, somewhere in those two lines or something like that. Okay, so they're going to be aiming right here at your head. Well, if you jump, you're going to be way over. Okay, you're going to be way over that doorway. So it's going to be way harder for them to hit you. And I come around here, jump, and you notice how this player shoots me in the body, okay? She shoots me in the body right here as I come over, all right? That's what I'm trying to say is that um, you don't have to um, hit all three of your bullets. You can just hit one of them, and jumping is so important. Now, she did ask in the message what sensitivity I'm using. So, I'm using sensitivity 4. I'm using the bu button layout bumper jumper because I always want to be able to jump with the left bumper. Okay, I want to be able to aim while I'm jumping, which is essentially what I'm doing right here. 
you're going to see me aim and jump, aim and jump. And I can see this guy here. Um, then I realize, okay, and that lift over. I had a really bad reload here. Did not need to do that. I did not need to reload. A lot of players have problems with that. You do not need to reload in SWAT until you've actually killed two or three of them off. Do not reload even if you have only two or three shots left. You need to definitely make sure um, that you're using that effectively. You always have your pistol as a backup secondary. There should be no reason why you should reload. Now, here's a really, really good example of something that your many players are not going to be able to have, all right? I, I'm going to actually turn up my sound a little bit here. So Chris just killed a guy right here, all right? And it's pretty obvious to me that this guy came through either this hallway or this area, okay? Now, he does the wrong thing. He runs the opposite direction. Okay, you need to be running towards this where this guy came from. Run to where he came from because these spawn points right here on the sides of the map, right here where the sniper usually spawns, okay, and the spawn points over on the other side are very, very common and very likely, okay. They're even sometimes more common in Adrift SWAT games than are base spawns, all right. Um, and it's just, I guess, simply because the bases can be lifted into, but these outer corners cannot be lifted into. That's where you lift from. So it's a, um, four different places you can go when you spawn on this corner. But as it is, those corners are kind of weighted spawn points. So that's exactly what I'm going to lo be looking for. And I hear the guy lift. And this is where the Astro A40 surround sound headset really comes into play, as I've already stated in previous videos. I can tell that this guy's lifting over this. I can tell if someone's lifting over this lift, if I'm standing, if I was standing a little bit closer, if I was standing like right here, I could tell if someone was lifting over this lift, and this, uh, up this lift, or up this lift, because it's not only directional, but these lifts sound differently. The ones on the outer side of the ma map sound the same, but the ones in the hallway sound a little bit different. So I easily clean him up for the headshot, again, sort of whipping my reticle. I see this guy coming over, and notice how... I don't jump out until I know I'm going to place my reticle on him. So I see the guy. See, I see the guy, but I back up because I, my reticle isn't necessarily on him. I know he's going to lift. So then I back up, wait, zoom, point upwards, and boom, grab him for the headshot. Now, I'm going to get the double kill here, and then I'm pushing to this hallway. Again, they're all spawning on this corner. So I'm pushing in on them. I get the overkill, and I get the kill tackle. Unfortunately, that body kind of hides uh, that guy for the kill atrocity, unfortunately. But um, there you go. Two or very early kill atrocities to start this game off with 13 kills. Um, now I'm going to lift into this base. Now what you need to be doing is you need to be jumping. Okay? You need to be up jumping because look what you can do. You don't necessarily have to jump into the base. You can also jump behind these little boxes. And this is one of the main reasons why I use the battle rifle. I'm going to show you guys right here, right here. Only one of my bullets goes actually past this box. All right? And it's actually quite insane how this bullet passes. Okay, this bullet passes through literally the uh, little, little opening here, hits this player in the head, and the other two, my other two shots, don't even hit him at all. So let's back that up so I can actually show you uh, what occurred here as I went over this lift. I lift over, zoom, whip scope, boom, he's dead. And to a lot of players, that would seem like lag, but no, I actually just shot through the corner of the box. It is very possible. Now, once again, I hear this guy lifting over and shoot at him, and I'm going to wait and look for where he, he may have spawners on him, so I'm going to push in on this area um, and make sure that... Now, you can see here, there's a lot of bodies. I need to be paying attention to that. There's a lot of bodies already here, so it looks like a battle already took place, and my teammate is getting ahead of me here. I don't want him to get all these kills, so I'm going to immediately rush into this lift, lift over, Try to get some kills here before my teammates come in and start taking kills from me. Now, it's a just really unfortunate SWAT, and I want to talk about this for just a second. A lot of people, players, get confused at how your CSR, or competitive skill ranking, is graded in a SWAT. Well, you have to get the highest medal score in the game. Right, guys, I want you to look, um, not at my kills, of sort of on the right-hand side of the scoreboard, but as to my points. My points have to be higher than everyone else's in the game, including my teammates, for me to rank up in my CSR. Now, this is more true later on. You can have, you know, um, the second most points in a game, and still your CSR will go up. But to re at the really high levels, you must be getting more points, not necessarily more kills, but more points per game than everyone else. So that's how your CSR is graded. It's based on your individual total medal score of points 
not whether you win the game or not, which is extremely important to realize. So you could have an, a huge number of deaths, and it doesn't matter, because you'll still be getting um, a, a hopefully a high number of kills. You may just be trading a lot. So I'm pushing towards this area, which my teammates just kind of ran away from. You can see how my teammates ran down this hallway into this base, and I came over from this lift area and into this base. Well, the thing I don't really need to do is turn around and literally walk the opposite direction. That's kind of silly. I'm just going to go ahead and continue rotating through the map and rotate quickly ahead of my teammates. I don't want my teammates to be ahead of me like Chris is right here. So I'm going to sprint and try to get ahead of him. He's watching the hallway, but as you can see here, I catch two players off guard really quickly. All right? This really just goes to show how I can pull the trigger more quickly, um, and I was I was jumping and aiming at their head. I, once again, I'm jumping, okay? A lot of players just really super underestimate this. You can zoom right after you exit sprint. So that's exactly what I did here. I found these two players in the hallway and nailed them. Really, just really solid shots there. Now, I didn't, I didn't get a good jump there, but thankfully that player is not extremely accurate. Um, it didn't take me out. Now, I'm watching this because I know this guy just pushed from there, and Chris is pushing in, got, gets a kill. So I'm going to go ahead and leave him there, okay? Because my teammate has pushed all the way over there. I'm not going to try to chase after him. That's silly, all right? I really don't want to try to do that. So I'm going to run back here because, look, look how my teammate is lifting over. He's going away from this area, and that's a, that's a good idea, but you have to realize that this teammate is literally lifting on top of us too. There's really no need to do that because he should recognize that we're not attacking anybody or blue little arrows are not flashing different colors so we're not attacking any other people so he shouldn't really lift to us there's really no point so i'm going to push to where he exited from now i see two bodies in the hallway here so i know we've already killed some of the enemy players but you can see how this guy spawned over here in this base and just pushed over here that's what's going to occur i'm running away from my teammates and then i'm finding kills that's exactly what you need to be doing now watching here very very quickly again because I don't want players to just catch me off guard here. Watching the hallways, I could I could have lifted over and there could have been a guy in this lower hallway. So as soon as I lift over and don't see anyone here, don't see anyone in my vision, I'm going to check this hallway just real fast, looking to the right, and then continue moving on. This These boxes are really underrated for hiding and moving around in cover. Definitely use those to your advantage. Um, you can pause behind them at any time, but I see my teammate died to the right over here, so I'm going to go towards his X. And they, the enemy players could use this to their advantage. So I'm trying to be very careful to aim where their heads are going to be as I come around the corner. I'm actually aiming a little bit lower than their heads. So I'm going to lift over into this base. I'm going to definitely uh, jump right here. It takes me a while to actually get this player. Um, but this guy's fighting someone in the attic and gets distracted. I get that killing frenzy. And I want you to, this is a really good movement on my part. As I fire at this guy long range, I've alerted this guy to my position. Okay, I, I don't think he knows I'm up here necessarily. But he could know that. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna go ahead and back down. I don't have any ammo. I'm gonna go ahead and drop to the right because it's unlikely he's gonna know I'm there. But I'm also doing a second thing, and that is cutting off other angles. Players who are lifting over on this lift or coming through this hallway are not gonna be or even through the attic are not gonna be able to see me very well. Okay? So I'm gonna push to the right here um, and, and try to get an alternate angle, and sure enough, this guy lifts over and is not even pointing at me. That's a really good movement decision on my part. Um, I uh, clean up Ripley's Revenge yet again on the corner. Now, I that guy, again, I'm double ba I'm doubling back, okay? Because I heard, um, right here, hold on. Right here, I hear this guy lifting, okay? Right here. But I already see Ripley's Revenge, so I'm going to go ahead and take care of her because this guy's not going to, he's not going to hit the, he's not going to hit the floor yet, okay? He's kind of in, he's kind of in mid, in mid path trajectory. So I can take care of this player on the corner first. Then I turn around and take care of this guy's lifting over. Um, it's really nice if you know these people are lifting over to stay right here because they, they, they don't look to the right here. They really don't. They come over and they're looking at the base. They don't look to the right. So it's really nice to take them out from that angle. I get the triple kill here um, on Ripley's Revenge yet again, spawning in the same place, unfortunately. Um, get the Ripley's again, uh, kill Ripley's Revenge again for the running riot. Um, just pushing in. Uh, really good use of the battle rifle here. That guy jumped very effectively. He almost took me out. I'm just going to, again, watch where he came from. And I, I pick up three kills here. Uh, now, these guys are lifting a decent amount. In really good games on SWAT, you're not going to find as many players lift. They're going to be running through the hallways, which is kind of a problem. But you can see how I... No, notice what I do here. Notice my decision-making. Okay, 
all three of my teammates are over here, and we just killed the only player separating us in this hallway. All right? It's very important to understand that at this moment, you need to go away from your teammates. Especially if you're trying to outscore them and get a high CSR, you have to go away from them. So I'm going to lift back to this base. Again, not, not a lot of people spawning the bases for whatever reason and during this game. So I see Ripley's Revenge again. Now she's jumping right here, which is a good idea. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump right as she comes around the corner. And all I'm doing is jumping into her head. Okay? You can see how my reticle started out below where her head is going to be. Okay? And I purposely uh, aimed down a little bit. Watch how I aim down here. Watch what I do here. See, I know she's jumping. I know she's going to come around the corner and jump. So I unzoom and I aim down. Look how I aim down right here. I aim down just before I jump so that when I jump, I mean, when I jump up into the air, my, my reticle is going to be right on her head. Boom. And one of my three shots, one of these three shots is going to hit her. Boom. Okay. That's what you really want to be doing. You want to be setting up for your jumps, making sure your reticle is a little bit below the player's head so that as you jump, you pull the trigger and those three shot burst kind of goes whoosh and covers a wider or vertical area than it normally would. And we are kind of nearing the last 10 kills of this game, so I see my teammate died over here. I'm going to watch this lift uh, a little bit, but I don't want my teammates to get ahead of me. Unfortunately, Jack kind of does there. He's going to be coming around the corner uh, real fast. There, so we see a guy, and I'm, we're going to be chasing him down. Now, also something I would not recommend is sprinting necessarily as much as I am, but I'm mainly sprinting at the appropriate times. Now, I want, I want to give you guys, again, some insight here, okay? My teammate is over here lifting. My other teammate just lifted. They're going to take care of this base. There's no point in me rushing down this hallway. There's no point, okay? So instead of going to that base, because they're, once they go to that base, they're likely to just keep on going, okay? I'm going to try to get across to where they're trying to go over here, which is where the enemy team is, where the enemies are spawning, by the way, okay? Where they, where they are right now. I'm going to try to cut off that angle more quickly by sprinting through the center of the map. This is when you want to use the attics in the center of the map, is when you know that your teammates are covering a specific area, and you want to jump ahead of your teammates to get there faster. Now, I just heard that guy shoot me or from behind, or try to shoot me from behind, okay? I heard this shot. Boom. Okay? This shot right here, I heard that. I know this player is going to be behind me, but I'm checking to make sure, coming around the corner here, and they trade in the hallway. I think that was Ripley's Revenge yet again with her DMR trading in that hallway. I'm going to be very careful with how I approach the situation. Um, I'm, I'm thinking people might lift over, but I don't hear anybody lift over, so I'm going to go ahead and charge in here. Uh, my teammates are kind of over here, so I'm just going to go, okay. So I see my teammate died over here in this base. I'm going to lift over. This is really unfortunate. Uh, my shots, I don't think, really registered that right there. I just barely missed, but I lift over and get the revenge. Now, here's a critical factor. If you want to outscore your teammates, and they have roughly the same number of kills you do, you want to be trying to go back and get revenge medals, because that adds a plus five to your score, okay? If you get a kill and a revenge medal, it's really nice, because it gets you more medal score, and thus you have a higher likelihood of outscoring your teammates. Now, I just heard someone go up the lift. That could have been a dead body. Yeah, in fact, that is a dead body or something um, over here, just real fast. Uh, that is a dead body, I believe. It's kind of um, hitting the lift. Their, their weapon was hitting the lift, unfortunately. Got to be really careful that the sound is still happening behind me, but I, I know that no one's lifting over there. It's kind of just a glitch sound. So I lift over into the space, get Annihilator once again, and we're going to end this game here um, pretty shortly, taking out Ripley's Revenge, pushing in on this corner, and taking out Ripley's Revenge yet again for the final kill. So guys, I really hope this helped you understand how to play a Drift SWAT a little bit better. Let's look at the after-game stats here. As you can see right here, I got two kill taculars, two overkills, four triple kills, one running riot, one killing frenzy. Um, to make up my medals here, let's switch over to my score. Looking at the score, you can see I got 37 kills and five deaths with a 530 score, doubling the score of any of my teammates or of the enemy players. Guys, I hope this helped you understand how to play SWAT better on a drift. It's probably one of the best gameplays I'm ever going to get on this map in SWAT. Um, and I'll see you guys in the next capture or whatever I end up recording. Peace.